let us look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was waiting endured the cross. Jesus came to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of God's favor. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, and those words are printed in the insert in the bulletin, the first two verses, then we'll, they're followed with the scripture lesson, and then the last two verses, which we'll sing at the end of the service, are in that insert as well. Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day, they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose? A day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down with the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin, then your light shall break forth like dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs 
in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, study, and works of love help us return to that love. I invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to love God and neighbor by confessing your sin and by asking God for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. Let us pray. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our, our heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess to you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness. We confess to you, O God, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience in our lives, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in our daily life and work, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, O God, for the wrongs we have done, for our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Amen. I've invited you to uh, to write down a few things on those slips of paper. Uh, I'll collect them. If you wish to share, you don't have to have anything. But if you do, you're welcome to put them in the tray. I'll remind us that as we, um, as we go to uh, impose the ashes, we will uh, I invite you to come forward to receive the ashes, but if you wish to receive the ashes where you're seated, please let me know, and I will be glad to uh, come and bring the ashes to you where you sit, so you don't have to come up front if you don't want to. Just raise your hand and come. 
Ashes imposed on your forehead, you may do that as well. Uh, not everybody wants to have the smudge on their forehead. These slips of paper represent things that have grieved us, things that have pleased us, people that we honor, people that we remember. Situations that we care deeply about. Situations that we wish would be different. Situations that we know are the best they can be. And all of these things, I'm not going to read any of them. <laughs> We're going to give them right to God. Because God knows the desires of our hearts. God knows the love that we've experienced in this world as we prepare ourselves, as we receive these things, as we share them with God. These form ashes. And these ashes will describe for each of us. I'm not gonna use these ashes to put on you, just so you know. Uh, the ashes that we will be using are uh, Ashes that have been uh, burned from previous Palm Sundays. Uh, this is going to go out eventually. But uh, rejoice because all these prayers go to God. All these words that we've shared are now God's and God's alone. All are invited and may come forward according to your need. As I said, if you need to be seated, please raise your hand in place and I will bring ashes to you. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust. Dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Almighty God does not desire the death of sinners, but that they may wait, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. Therefore, we implore God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit that those things which we do this day may be pleasing to God, that the rest of our lives may be lived faithfully, and that at the last we may come to God's eternal joy through Jesus the Christ. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading in scripture is found in 2 Corinthians in the fifth chapter, continuing through the first 10 verses of the sixth chapter. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So when anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For God says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, dying as dying, and see, look, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. May God add a blessing to our hearing and understanding of this, the Holy Word of God. This is one of those nights and times where, again, as I read through these scripture lessons, um, as I read them again this evening, I don't need to say anything else. It's well spelled out in the scriptures. Be reconciled to God, and here's how to do it. Problem. <laughs> the problem is not with God, but with us. Maybe we need more afflictions, hardships, beatings, 
calamities, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. Those of us that are parents in this room know what that's like. Because we've gone through a lot of that with our kids. We worry about it. God does that with us every day because God sees that not maybe I'm not the one that received the hardships or the beatings or the calamities or the imprisonments, the riots, the hunger. But every day, somebody's experiencing that. Every single day, there are people who are blaming God for the hardships that they're experiencing. There are people that don't recognize that God doesn't, that God represents knowledge and patience and kindness and holiness of spirit and genuine love and truthful speech and the power of God. These are the things that God wants us to do in our Lenten fast. Isaiah started us off talking about fasting, didn't he? You've come here in an act of penitence to put a cross of ashes on your head, to cover yourselves with mourning clothes, and to prepare your hearts for a week of betrayal that results in our Savior's death on a cross. That's what we're here to do. But Isaiah says quite clearly that if you're only doing that to better yourself, to improve your station in life, if it's only for a personal reason, then you don't understand what righteousness means. Because righteousness is something that you can't personally do or be by yourself. You can think of yourself as a righteous person, but if it's not righteous in community, if it's not righteous in society, if it's not a way that you connect with other people, then you might as well be a hermit living in the desert somewhere, not interacting with anybody, and trying to get as close to God as you can that way. You may feel better about yourself by the end of your journey. But I don't know where the rest of the world would be in relationship to you. Because as far as I know, everybody in this room is spending time in community in one way or another. So the question becomes, what kind of a fast are you going to choose for the next 46 days? When is 46 days? It's not just 40. Sundays don't count, okay? We get Sundays off from our fast. Sunday's a day when we get to celebrate, when we get to hear the good news, when we get to share the good news, when we get to come to church and have our coffee hours, we can have our time together in fellowship with other human beings. But the other 40 days of Lent is when you're working on yourself when you're working with your community, when you are trying to do these things that Isaiah calls us to, because this is the fast that God chooses. Loose the bonds of injustice. Is that something you can do by yourself? I don't think so. Undo the thongs of the yoke. Not only animals carried a yoke in Jesus' day, also, people were yoked. And it's not too far in our past that we had people who were under the yoke of slavery in this country. Not long enough ago yet. 
Share your bread with the hungry. Bring the homeless poor into your house. If we think that all the Bible wants us to do is to enact a sense of personal purity that keeps ourselves clean, behavior mandates that keep us from improperly touching each other, then we're missing the point. Because we've got homeless here and now and not too far away. And when was the last time you had anybody in your house that was homeless? For some, it might be sooner than, than I might guess. More recently, But we need to stop that business of, well, yeah, I really think that we need to do something about our homeless problem, but just not in my backyard. Don't put a tent there or a housing development there or a homeless shelter there because it doesn't fit with my sensibilities. It might lower my property values. When you see the naked, cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin. Remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom shall be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. You'll be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. That's a lot. And it is always within our reach. And it's not about just giving it to God, but taking it up on our own. And working together as a community to build this kind of a place that Jesus keeps talking about, Isaiah kept talking about, Paul kept talking about, all the people in the Bible keep talking about, and we just can't do So, I close. Reconcile. Be reconciled to God as an individual, as a church, as a community. Because that's what righteousness can be. Amen. Let's pray. God, you come to us. You remind us of our sinful nature. You remind us that we are called to greater things, and particularly as we enter this fast of Lent, Grant us your presence and your peace. Grant us your loving shelter and grant us the opportunity to serve with purpose. A world that needs our voice. Help us connect. Help us share, help us recognize truth. Help us express love. Help us to move into the Easter Sunday with joy that has built up from a 
complete examination of our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our motives. And help us to shed all those unnecessary things that keep us from loving each other. Things like poverty and hunger. Things like racism and politics. Things like ambition and greed. Grant us faithfulness. And endurance. Through Jesus Christ who taught us that we can pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may stand if you wish. God will bring with us all the saints to the joy of Christ's resurrection. Depart in peace, full of the strength of God's love. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the prayer. Post.